<laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to Legacy of Fools, a Dungeons & Dragons actual play stream where one adventurer's choices can change the lives of adventurers to come, broadcasting to you live from an isolated room floating somewhere in the ethereal plane. Um, thank you all for tuning in. Uh, if you have never watched our stream before, uh, you are everybody, uh, as this is our first stream. Uh, we are launching tonight, uh, so thank you for joining us at the very beginning of this little journey we're going on. Um, I'm sure there are some people in the, uh, the Twitch right now who I have talked to directly about it and explained what the idea behind the stream is, but I would like to talk a little bit about it before we start. Um, <clears throat> What, you may ask yourself, if you've seen our Instagram recently, is Legacy D&D. &D. Technically, it is nothing. That's not a term. But um, part of what we're doing is kind of inspired by the concept of Legacy Gaming, which is uh, from the world of board games. There's like, uh, there are Legacy versions of other popular board games, and the concept is every time you play it, you make permanent changes to the game, to the board, to the rules that then hold true for every subsequent time you play that game. And that is how we're approaching this. What we are intending to do is uh, every single officially published 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons campaign book uh, in the order they were published, and we will be trying our absolute best to keep and emphasize an ongoing continuity between them. So what one party does and the choices they make and the things they accomplish are canon history for all the subsequent uh, campaigns and stories we tell. New parties every time, but they will feel the effects of previous parties. So if uh, really early on our players manage to blow up Waterdeep, I will have to make significant edits to Dragon Heist. Um, so... Uh, before we get any further into it, I would like to introduce our players! Oh, I am Tim, by the way. Hello, nice to meet you. Uh, look at them. They're all pretty people. Uh, I think we're gonna go <laughs> starting over here and along the line here. And everyone just give a little introduction of yourself and let everybody know. Um, actually, I'm gonna start it over here with you. Okay. I'm gonna go that way. Let everybody know your personal level of experience with Dungeons & Dragons. Okay. Hi, I'm Jamie. I've been playing Dungeons and Dragons for a little over 10 years now. And I, I run games, I play games, I do whatever it takes to play this game. Uh, hi, I'm Amanda. I have been playing D&D, I think since about 2017, and it just ended up being a thing I do almost all the time now. So, oops, hi, I'm here now. <laughs> Uh, hey there, I'm Eric. Uh, while the first game of d and I played was back in 2013, officially this is the only, the third time I've sat down for an official campaign. Hi, I'm Amy, and I'm the team idiot. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've played d and we'll, we'll say generously, a handful of times. How many fingers were on that person's hand? <laughs> <laughs> He'd been in an accident. <laughs> um, hi, I'm Genevieve. I have played D&D &D since 2017, but due to the classic big bad of D&D &D scheduling, I've probably only played maybe 30 games in that time. Um, have been in a few different campaigns. Um, still have no idea what I'm doing. Uh, and I personally, Tim, um, I've been playing since around the beginning of fifth edition. Um, I've been DMing a couple years less than that, though probably around seven or so now. Um, I have played a lot of it. I play arguably too many games a week currently. I have been a professional DM, and now I embark on this journey. Um, and, uh, part of this, I, I, we very specifically wanted to bring in people we thought would be sort of fun to play with and have good personalities, but we wanted a few people who were less experienced, because part of what we're doing in this ongoing thing is we're starting at the very beginning in terms of play. Um, we're starting at the very beginning of 5th edition, one of the very first things they published. The players, as we go forward, when they make their characters for each campaign and as they level through campaigns, will be restricted to uh, character options that were available at the time the adventure was published. I, as the DM, can use whatever the hell I want. Um, haha. So, <laughs> we start all the way at the very beginning. 
Our first adventure is Lost Mine of Fan Delver, published in July of 2014, before they a month before they had actually published the player's handbook. It was the adventure that came with the starter set, and so we have been restricted to the basic rule set that comes on a little soft-bound leaflet inside of that box. Uh, DM, quick pause yes. from the chat. I believe we've been told we have a little bit of a delay. Delay, mostly you. <laughs> well, um, fuck. Sorry. <laughs> They'll hear that. Oh, they will be swearing in this stream. Um, oh, by yeah. the way, not child friendly. <laughs> yeah, please don't. Um, <laughs> so we might want to pause for about ten seconds and adjust the we'll delay. We'll be back. We'll be very. We'll shortly. be right back. <laughs> right back to adjust After the these. delay. Thank you, Scheduled chat, messages. telling us this. <laughs> Are we, are we back in? 100%. <laughs> Take two, everyone. Sit tight, and we'll repeat everything we just said verbatim. Uh, no. So, uh, we begin with uh, the Lost Line of Fandelver, and it's an uh, extremely simple rule set. And uh, without further, let's, uh, let's uh, dip into the legacy here. Oh, shoot. What? Oh, no. That, that was... I'm excited Me that too. we're getting to Thank get... Thank you, Amanda. <laughs> I'm not gonna talk ever again. I love you. Don't ever. It's gonna make for such a good stream. I know. <laughs> yeah. Six people sitting in silence. <laughs> can't, can't be delayed if we don't talk. <laughs> gotcha, Twitch. All right. So better. Fall. Yeah, we're good. Thank you. Ready to go? Beautiful. Good. The legacy of fools begins now. Far away from here, there is a world known as the Forgotten Realm. Or at least that is what some call it. A world known as Toral, a world of magic and danger, living through an era of myth and legend. And on this world, there lies a continent known... <laughs> what did I just say? Continent. continent. <laughs> we had a continuity error. Just go back a bit. <laughs> yep, there is a continent. I think someone at the table is allergic to continent, so... <laughs> Sorry, I think we have a case of the sillies over here. Um, I, I hadn't noticed. Yeah, anyway, go on. Uh, we, there is a continent known as Faerun. A place so vast its furthest reaches remain unmapped. It's... They can't see us, it's just on you. <laughs> oh, great. Good. They're doing something ridiculous. Oh, God. Uh, it's... <laughs> its furthest reaches unmapped. Its deep, uh, deepest secrets unknown. But our story starts from that vast unknown in one of Faerun's most populous regions. It is a place known as the Sword Coast. A series of powerful city-states dotting a dramatic landscape of mountains and forests in the continent's northwest. And we pull our focus narrower, uh, to a part of the Sword Coast that has seen more than its fair share of trouble in the last century or so. A region that has seen many of its smaller communities destroyed by one calamity or another. Even the powerful city-state that rules it, Neverwinter, had whole districts destroyed about 30 years ago, when a nearby volcano, Mount Hotenau, erupted. The repairs have been slow, and some sections of the city remain in ruin. But it gradually returns to prominence, and is working to rebuild its holdings. We narrow in, again, to the city's wealthier, less damaged western end in the Blue Lake District, specifically near the harbor, to a small, seedy dockside inn known as the Sea Shoals Tavern. It is... The middle of the afternoon, the uh, interior of this tavern, a s comfortable, if somewhat dusty space, uh, is seeing its uh, afternoon clientele. Maybe not as many people as it will have once night falls, but a boisterous lunchtime crowd. And we focus in on a person sitting at a back corner table. Uh, keeping an eye, or at the very least an ear, on the activity around him. Uh, Amanda, would you please describe your character? All right, so yeah, so um, at that table, uh, there is a tall, lanky human man uh, in very simple traveler's clothes, linen, uh, tunic, and dark pants and boots. Uh, over that is just plain brown robe, um, long, uh, long black hair that sort of falls down over his face. Uh, and if you look closely past the hair, you see that about half of his face is covered with recently healed burn scars. 
Uh, he's sort of sitting hunched, trying to seem inobtrusive as possible. Uh, doesn't carry much, but has a a, a simply cut uh, pear-shaped citrine necklace around his neck. Uh, what are you eating or drinking at this moment? Uh, I think I uh, I have had the same ale for like the last hour. Uh, is there like any reduction in the, the fluid level on the? Very little. Great. I uh, love all of the genuine detail you've got, and you're gonna have to stop me real hard for making about three thousand Phantom of the Opera jokes about this character. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <yes. laughs> because you did do half the face, and here anyway. Sorry, go on. We just need a, mask. a few of things to come. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you uh, you sit there hunched over your you know your hands around this mug of ale. You're mostly not drinking, hunched, just listening to the people around you. Um, and you happen to lay eyes on uh, a table uh, 15 feet or so away, um, out in the middle of the room, uh, a party of four people sitting at it. Um, all look relatively armed and armored. Uh, they have sort of a, an adventurer look about them. Uh, and uh, one of them, uh, a Goliath, turns to the others. It looks like a uh, female half-elf, uh, a uh, human man, uh, and uh, a n uh, female gnome. Uh, and the life turns to all of them goes, I think we're on to something here. We could get there um, maybe seven, eight days. It's not a super long journey. Make last few preparations in town, we are on our way. We will be uh, rich, great treasures, great excitement. This is good information. You have gotten us <clears throat> nimble. Uh, I look forward to this adventure. And they all sort of cheers their glasses. All right. Um, I am going to take probably a bigger sip than I've been taking the entire last hour I've had mm -hmm. this drink. Uh, and then going to make my way to the table. <clears throat> um. Uh, what time of day is it? Uh, like early afternoon. I no things I know. Um, all right, so uh, I'm yeah. I uh, going to just walk up and say, um, uh, hi. Um, uh, and there's just like all four of them kind of just stop in the middle of what they're doing, and there's like an audible chair screech as they like turn to look at you go and the uh, half elf. <laughs> Some stuff just fell over. <laughs> Might be time to deal with that. <laughs> um, excuse us for a minute. That was a thrill, everybody. It's like <laughs> half the room just fell over. Okay. I Was anyone not watching in California like, oh, earthquake? <laughs> no, <laughs> weirdly. Nah, I do think that's, I, I do like that as a, Possible. Can we just gaslight everyone watching in LA right now? Like, <laughs> you guys didn't feel that? Did you feel that? Yeah. Yeah. That was like a 4.6. All right. That was a 10.12. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, uh, accurate reaction to my character talking. Uh. So that is <laughs> what just happened in here is how it feels to you as yeah. all four of these people just kind of turn <laughs> and stare at you. Go, <laughs> and the, the, the half elf goes, I'm sorry? G good afternoon. Hi. I heard that, oh, overheard you talking uh, about, um, uh, you are going out on an adventure at some point soon. The gnome goes, yes, we're, we're adventurers. It's, it's sort of the thing we do. G great. Would you need a assistance in any way? The human looks up and goes, Are you, is it you offering yourself? Yes. Ah, oh, that's, that's nice of you. Um, the Goliath just goes, we sort of, um, we've been traveling uh, together mm. for a while, you mm -hmm. see, and uh, we have sort of a group dynamic we're pretty happy with. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Um, me, I, Promise, I, I I do have some 
skills with, with the arcane arts if it would be of any assistance at you. How did you get... Mm. Are you okay? Says the half-elf. I'm fine. You sort of got a... You looked like you maybe um, got hurt. Was that a... Was that a magic thing that happened? Well, an experimental thing happened. Oh. So listen, um, I'm no, sure I, you're I like a really it. good I... spellcaster, like really good. I heard it the moment I we're, said it. It's fine. We're all set, though. Yep. We, um, yep. We've got this thing all planned out. We've got all sort of our whole uh, treasure sharing arrangement uh, really well you figured out. Oh, we really? I got, I got it. I got it. I got it. I'm okay. This but... is bringing a lot of whole high school trauma for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna, without any more words, just walk back to my table and back and staring at my beard that I'm not gonna. You out of the corner of your eye, see them just like talk to each other a little more, finish their drinks, and just sort of get up and walk off. <sighs> yeah, that about tracks. Uh. Ollie will pull out, um, name's Ollie, by the way, uh, <laughs> sorry, uh, we'll just pull out um, a notebook and make um, just a note with the name of this tavern and just kind of scratch it off. Uh, <laughs> barmaid uh, who's been serving you comes by, just sort of, uh, like, tray of empties in her hand, just sort of, like, wipes a little splotch off your table. She goes, that didn't look fun. No. You are right. That was not fun. You uh, need a refill? You look like you, uh, oh, you're running out of that one. I'm teasing. I'm sorry. You're, I, in, a, it, you're it, in a bad it, state. It, fine. You I'm, were in here like a week ago, right? Yeah. Doing that. the same thing? Yep. Yep, yes, I was. I'm sorry, man. I... <sighs> Is there a job board somewhere? Not like a <laughs> formal one. Okay, really. just thought no. I'd ask. You, you know, always, trying you different methods. You always check methods. in with I, you know, businesses in the area, town guard, yep. stuff like that. Guy named Craig. He has a risk. I don't have. <laughs> I don't have adventuring work. Mm. Might be able to give you a, a task or two here and there if you want I, just I, a I, little something to make some money. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm happy to to help. It. It's less the money, but I, I appreciate. I, I appreciate Takes you. Takes you to a rough part of town, at least. Maybe there's danger there. Something you need your magic for. I know it's not what you're looking for, but uh, sure. something. What, what, do you, what do you need help help with? There's a um, tavern, uh, mm -hmm. sort of east end of town. Um, I don't know how well you know Neverwinter. I've been here really just a couple of weeks, so not uh, terribly well. There's a... Uh, Big chasm running through the uh, southeastern portion of oh. town opened up yeah. uh, when the volcano went off about 30 years back. Yeah. Um, a lot of the neighborhood around that is not uh, particularly rebuilt. It's kind mm. of a poorer part of town. They've paid less attention to it. It's kind of a slummy neighborhood. There's a uh, tavern over that way, though, on the southern side. Sort of a, on the southern rim of the uh, chasm. I can give you directions. Mm. Uh, it's called uh, the um, the Shady Nook. Shady Nook. Uh, woman who runs it, uh, Angie Derman by name. Uh, sort of person. There's one of them in every town who, um, let's say, knows how to get things. Sometimes she gets interesting things. She has a little extra. She sends them to some of her friends in town. Um, Heard she got a uh, shipment in of a fairly hard to find, um, fairly high value, not strictly legally imported uh, dwarven ale in stock. She might have a little extra of. Uh, it's good stuff. Our customers like it when we can get it. You might pop over there, see if you can finagle a keg or two off of her for me. Sure. Give you a couple gold. Sure. sure. Does she usually just give? The, these illicit goods for, for gold, or is that a thing that you would want me to talk to her about? That is what I was hoping you would do, yeah. Okay, yeah, okay, like yeah. You said rough neighborhood, I don't like going there myself. No, that's that's fair, rough. yeah, that's fine. Skilled user of magic, so. Uh, I 
Yeah, uh, sure, I can do that. Yeah. Uh, could tell her I sent you, uh, Magda from the Sea Shoals. Magda. Th- th- thank you, Magda. Yeah, no problem. And hey, come back in any time. One of these days, you know, you'll you'll find the people you're looking for. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, thank, thank what, you. That one's on me. Uh, oh, 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 thank you. Welcome. Uh, well, I'll start getting ready to go over yeah, to the... Start gathering your things, get up from the table, and you head out. Uh, just, just hear a kind of sympathetic... Uh, as you walk away. <laughs> just keep going. And you give yourself one, too. <laughs> <laughs> Mine is infinitely less sympathetic. <laughs> Judgmental. And we leave. Ollie exiting the tavern for a moment. Uh, we shift our focus uh, deeper into the Blue Lake, uh, into its uh, sort of wealthier northern section. The house is a little bigger, the street's a little wider, a few more trees, and we focus our attention in on one of the larger of the houses nearby. Uh, and an upper bedroom of that house where a uh, man is going through the somewhat fastidious process of getting dressed for the day. Uh, he probably looks to us like he's only recently gotten up, despite the time. And, uh, Jamie, would you describe your character for us? Absolutely. Uh, so, uh, this character, as he fixes himself in the mirror, uh, he is just wearing his, um, uh, just, just, uh, the next layer above the, uh, the undergarments layer. Uh, he, his puffy, billowy shirt. Um, he is, uh, currently putting on his vest with a deep V. Uh, he has, uh, you can see, um, on this kind of, uh, this, this, uh, suede kind of leather vest, uh, you can see the arms of, uh, some sort of house. Uh, you see four crossed rapiers, uh, forming a diamond on a field of steely blue. Uh, he has uh, kind of um, short cropped black hair, uh, but in this moment he kind of flips on a shoulder length dirty blonde wig uh, <laughs> tied behind his head in a ponytail with kind of uh, put, uh, some hair clasps put in there, bearing the same coat of arms sigil. Uh, it's got one perfect blonde curl that kind of comes down the front. Amazing. Ugh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> His face is sharp and very angular, yet not unbecoming, kind of like a young Benedict Cumberbatch. Um, and you can see in this mirror, in this moment in the mirror now, he is kind of drawing on with a little blonde, uh, little blonde, uh, like, Eyebrow crayon. Pencil, like. Um, no, he's drawing on a blonde mustache, like little over what little wisps he has, uh, despite his uh, black eyebrows kind of uh, belying his real hair color. Um, he continues putting on his things. Uh, he's got, uh, uh, he puts on kind of this, uh, this like noble kind of coat over it, uh, proudly displaying um, a ship with raised sails in front of a blue sky. He's got these like billowy um, things that come out the elbows and the front. Uh, he puts on some black gloves, black leather boots, uh, and sl- uh, throws a, a few things into a satchel that kind of slings over his shoulders uh, diagonally. Um, clasps uh, a belt, clasp boots. It takes a, a long time for this guy to get ready. Uh, and he, um, of course, uh, straps on. Uh, he's got a, you can see kind of in the mirror reflected and in the sun is kind of shining on it. Uh, and he kind of looks over and gives it a look for a moment and just admires its beauty uh, of this kind of uh, beautiful, if not slightly uh, seen better days style rapier um, with a peacock on the pommel that just kind of just laying uh, tossed amidst the blankets on the bed. Uh, and why it's in the bed. Who's to say? But um, he goes over to it and kind of gently picks it up uh, like a lover, and then um, slowly kind of turns it around and gently slides it into uh, the frog at his hip. Um, And uh, yeah, he kind of uh, takes one last look in the mirror before he goes and strikes kind of this elegant pose with his hand up like this and just goes, hmm. Oh my god. Did anyone else hear like Huey Lewis in the news playing through all of that in the background? Uh, yeah, I did, yes. <laughs> of course. So, and I'm glad you song. received it, yeah. <laughs> Uh, if, you, if you ever like make a make a character playlist or whatever for this mm, guy, that's what it's, it's got to start, start with, with like that. heart and soul or something. Ooh, <laughs> yeah, I like that. God. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's all silvery and blue, uh, and uh, he's got fair skin, 
sea green eyes, little wisps of nimbus gray. Uh, and he notices that, gives a wink to himself before he turns towards the door and begins to exit. <laughs> uh, you make your way out of the uh, bedroom you've been staying in. Yes. And sort of down the grand staircase into the foyer. Servant! Uh, and a, like, footman steps out of nearby alcove. Just, mm. uh, yes, sir. Ah, uh, um... You should be a little closer. I don't wish to raise my voice as much in the future. You're right, sir. I shall stand in the middle of the foyer the next time you arise at uh, this time of day. Well, not in the middle. Stand off to the side, just against the wall, not all the way back in the alcove. You're right, sir. My fault. Thank you. Um, where is everybody? Um, the, uh, the children are out for the day. Uh, Lord and Lady are, uh, in their, um, parlor, uh, entertaining a, a guest, a family friend. I can oh. tell them you've arisen and wish to speak to them. Oh, yes, uh, do so announce me. I'll follow, post haste. Um, yes. Where, so. uh, uh, pastries? <laughs> <laughs> Food there, there in are, there? There are some in the kitchen, sir. I believe there is a dish of pastries, uh, Set out in the parlor? If there is food in the parlor, lead the way and I shall find it. Uh, yes, uh, uh, follow me, sir. Uh, he leads you to a room, steps through the door and shuts it behind him. Mm. There's some muttering from inside. He opens it up and says, the lord and the lady uh, will uh, see you, sir. Yes. Uh, you make your way in uh, and find <laughs> your hosts who you've been uh, spending some time with. Um, very well-to-do, like, noble couple. Uh, the Lord, um, like, a slight man, but uh, not, like, super skinny. Just, like, very, very trim, um, very sh close-cropped brown hair, uh, like, high cheekboned look, uh, immaculately dressed in, like, waistcoat and, like, tails. Uh, the lady of the house, uh, hair sort of in a very tidy bun off the back of her head, and, like, blonde hair, um, sort of frilled frock and things, sitting very peacefully in a chair. There is a third person in the room you've never seen before. Okay. Uh, uh, before, if you just are going to describe them, uh, toe forward, um, uh, arm out, immediately strikes a deep bow to them. You do. Uh, he looks somewhat surprised and taken aback. Mm -hmm. um, it is a larger man, also human. Uh, very barrel-chested, very burly uh, figure. Um, sort of... Um, salt and pepper hair um not this it, it's like very tidy in a like an almost it's not quite like a buzz cut or anything but there's an almost like sort of soldier neatness to it uh a little bit of a goatee um wearing like not quite the same sort of wealthy noble finery but well dressed and very tidily dressed uh was I make sure I aim my bow mostly towards the Lord yes. and Lady. Uh, he just sort of goes, oh, uh, Hello. Uh, the Lord goes, uh, Jaden. Ah, hail and well I, met, my Lord. How well, does this day greet you? Well, several hours ago. Um, <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> I'm glad you've been for the day. Uh, hmm. Wilhelmina and I have been wanting to uh, have a little conversation with you. Uh, Sildar, I'm I'm so sorry. Um, we need to have a talk with our lodger here. Um, I want to continue this conversation. Would you mind uh, waiting uh, in the room just for a few moments? Uh, Rensley will show you to somewhere very comfortable. Uh, yes, of course. Um, uh, I'm, I'm happy to. Thank you very much. Um, pleasure to meet you, Mr. Uh, Jaden Fallacious Cross Garden, <laughs> at oh, your service. Uh, pleasure to meet you, uh, Sildar Hallwinter. The pleasure is all mine, sir. I do wish we had but a moment to speak longer, but perhaps soon? I will consider myself very unlucky to not have that moment. Uh, <laughs> you have a nice time. Uh, I'll be back. And he steps out of the room and shuts the door behind him. The, la uh, the lady of the house, Wilhelmina, looks at you and goes, How did you sleep, Jaden? Well? Oh, Wilhelmina, like a goose on <laughs> another goose. Just 
There were feathers well, is, involved, you understand? Well, yes, it is it the, was love. The mattress and the pillow were stuffed with town. So yes, geese. Yeah. Yes. Um, I mean, I imagine you, uh, I know it's a comfortable bed. I'm the one who picked it out. Oh, uh, you did lovely, dear. Thank you. I'm sure you're well acquainted with how comfortable it is. You've been here, what, two months? Oh my, has it been? Just two months? <laughs> I, uh, I guess, I suppose so, if you the, say so. The I'd... Lord of the House, uh, looks, he goes, yes, it has been two months. <laughs> Time flies, you know. <laughs> I suppose. Now, um, Jaden, you, uh, we've, we've loved having you here. It has been tremendous. Um, as always, our families go very far back, very good friends. Nothing but the utmost respect for your mother. Wonderful woman. Um, you wish for me to stay longer. You came into town uh, on business, you said, when you got here. That is correct, yes. Um, you've been vague about your business the whole time, and uh, mm. we did not expect it to take quite two months. Um, if I may ask, is your business close to concluded? Uh, I see. Well, um, you know, this business like this, um, it is, you know, it only becomes more successful the more time is invested into it. And my mother, Verna, you know, she would, um, she would, uh, really, uh, she, it's, well, it's, it's of the utmost importance, you see, this, this little... Well, this course. mission she sent me here for. Of yes, we, yes, we of course. We fully understand the dedication uh, you are putting in, starting every day at the crack of one. Um, the thing is, uh, we do sometimes like to entertain. I mean, we've been entertaining you. It's been lovely. I want to stress that. Oh. Um, Divine. We may want to have other guests come soon and would need the guest bedroom for that. Oh, well, I, um, I am, uh, happy to, you know, uh, assist you in finding, uh, another, uh, carpenter or mason <laughs> to help you construct another no, guest no, no, bedroom. Do I do, and my mother has connections we in the city. We do not wish to do of construct course. additions to our house, Jaden. Why not? Um, it's so small. I mean, compared to the Cross Garden Estate down in Baldur's Gate, of course. Of, of course, it's lovely for, you know, people of your means and size of your family. You have to go. What? <laughs> <laughs> we need you to leave, Jaden. We need our... I can go for the day, of course. And <laughs> then I'll be... What? We need you to uh, cease taking residence in our home. Uh, we need our space back. Don't... I don't want to, you to um, interpret this as we haven't loved having you here. We have. Yes, we have loved having you here. It has been wonderful. You are a lovely man and very pleasant to spend time with. The children love you, which frankly concerns me. But uh, <laughs> we need our home back to be just our family and, um, you know, the servants and any other guests we choose to have going forward. Well, of course, I understand why, <laughs> I understand why you might be saying that, um, and it does just still sound kind of to me like a space issue, and I do think Jayden, it can be resolved. Jaden, Jaden, mm -hmm. it's not about space, it's about privacy. We need our space to be just us for a little while, uh, so we need you to vacate the room you've been staying in by... Well, the end of the day, I'm sure you'll have no problem finding other lodging uh, with all the money I'm sure your uh, business has been taking in. Well, uh, it's not a business that takes in money. It's investing money in things to eventually see some prosperity. Well, my dividends Lord. then. I'm yes. sure you have dividends. There are many irons on many fires. I just, I just wanted to check with the, the, Lady Wilhelmina. Surely this is the uh, Lord's uh, request, and you are just no, going I'm, along with it. I feel and, very confident about this request. Uh, I would ask that you not make this awkward for any of us, and please just leave. So your minds are 
Um, quite made up then on the issue. Yeah, I'm afraid they are quite made up. We can recommend any number of uh, the finest inns in town. A man of your means, I'm sure you'll have no trouble. I... Well, you, uh, I wasn't going to share this, um, but you have reduced me to no other choice. My lord, my lady, I am sadly destitute. You're destitute? You see, my, yes, my, my mother, she sent me with a certain amount of coin. Frankly, I told her it wouldn't be enough, but when I came here, I, and, and you all took me into your lovely home, I thought for sure it would not need to take as long and require so much money. But, but yet here we are, and I have gone through all my funds. So you see, you cannot uh, throw so me out on the street. I would be... You, we'd be putting you on the street. Yes, I, I cannot go back to Baldur's Gate. It is so very far, and I have not the coin for the trip. Well, we, we couldn't possibly work. Jaden, we can help you find some well-paying work that will cover lodging for you. Yes, uh, oh. Work? Oh, yes. Our friend, uh, who's here, Sildar, he works for the Lord's Alliance. I'm sure oh. he has connections and can... The Lord's put, Alliance. Can put you in touch with some sort of work befitting a man of your station. Don't they fight monsters and such? Sometimes much of their work is deeply political. Uh, rubbing shoulders with lords and ladies and things like that. Um, in, a, in almost a... Uh, uh, galas, would you say those? Oh, yes, galas. Many galas. galas. Oh. Many, many galas. Uh, Interesting. It would be, you'd be almost something like an ambassador, probably. I mean, Well, that's know, indeed, that's what I am here. What work they have available. Um, She goes over to the door, opens it, goes, Rensley, bring Sildar back, please, please. And a moment later, uh, Sildar is shown back in the room and goes, Oh, I, uh, geez, I assumed you would have been... Um, Gone from how they said it. Uh, very nice to meet you again. I guess we uh, do get to spend more time together. I guess. Sildar, uh, our very good friend Jaden here is uh, running low on funds and in need of paid work. We would consider it a great favor to the family that we would be happy to uh, make worth your time to you to find some sort of work for him. Sildar just looks at you. Galas and the like, you understand. <laughs> Okay, um, I don't, I don't have any galas at the moment. Uh, I'm sure some will come soon. Um, what skills do you have? <laughs> well, uh, gala-related skills or any skills. outside gala skills? Um, I see. Um, well, uh, I am a world-class uh, 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 peacock trainer. Uh, you might have heard of Caspian the Bright. You might not. So, um, uh, also, as you know, my family runs the Baldur's Gate swordplay games, of course, uh, famous up and down the coast. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yep, I've definitely I've heard of that. And being that we sell the finest noble wits, uh, and my family are all champion duelists. Uh, surely you know. You seem, you seem like the type who would be very good at uh, swordplay. Indeed, yeah. my brother Christopher you know, Crossgarden is the all-time highest. I have uh, yeah. something for you. It's not long-term, though. I can put you in touch with the people in my organization. Um, I'm leaving town for a bit soon, so I probably won't be here to deal with you directly. Okay, uh, all right. But I, uh, I can send you on something today. There are uh, a few priests of a local uh, religious order who've been. Well, coming to the Lord's Alliance, uh, they ask, asking for um, a bodyguard of some sort. It makes use of your sword skills. It is very, very Ooh. dignified because you're helping uh, clergy. Right. Uh, it's uh, perfect for a man like you. Uh, they're doing, they're ministering to the poor in a kind of rough part of town, Ooh. and they want someone to uh, keep an eye on them. Ooh, I, People I... would see you as a sort of a beloved patron. Beloved mm -hmm. patron. <laughs> yes. Um, well, if... I could send you there right now. You could go straight over. I'll give you an address. You would have uh, 
renown, a little cash, and uh, yes. you wouldn't have to be stay here dealing with me. <laughs> you are a pleasure, my good sir. As I'm... are you. Oh, thank you. So I show up, I put in a bit of FaceTime, I let the, the you know, the peasants ogle a little, and um, I throw them some predetermined amount of coin, maybe? And you, uh... Or am I gonna have to... You don't have... need to throw them coin, they're handing out soup. You just need oh. to stand next to throw them, them looking soup. regal and dignified and holding a sword. Oh, oh, excellent. I'm sure there'll be no need for you to use it. It'll just be very simple. Good, I wouldn't want to. <laughs> I wouldn't want to hurt anybody. No, I wouldn't want you to have to hurt anybody. So, um, it's settled. You go there, uh, they'll pay you, um, and I will wish you the best of luck. Yes. I'll it, write down an address please. for you. And there you are. Oh, my gracious benefactor, you shall not regret this, nor shall you, Wilhelmina and my lord. <laughs> I do want you to know I've appreciated my time here. And uh, I, I obviously must be going. I'm so sorry, but tell the children I said goodbye and such. We will. We will definitely tell them. Oh, yes. Excellent. Uh, and as Jaden departs from the home... I hit my room to get my, the rest of my things, of mm -hmm. course, my whip, my like, crossbow, and then I head down. We move our focus. Mm. I'm gonna need that middle name one more time. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Sorry, how do you spell fallacious? Go uh, on. <laughs> F E L A C Y U S. No more it's questions. A C and not a T. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, Good. Glad. Yeah. Glad we got C -Y. this. Uh, okay. I just was that after his father or a uh, great grandfather actually, Felicius oh, no. Crossgarden. Yeah, I heard that was after his mother. <laughs> We shift our focus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we just lost all our viewers. Oh, no! <laughs> oh, we, shift, we shift our focus oh, once oh again. A point a little bit further south in the city, <clears throat> uh, overlooking the uh, Neverwinter River. A uh, bridge across it, uh, sort of a very regal, very decorative, uh, largely uh, affair, largely carved of like granite roadway and then marble railings and adornments. Um, sort of uh, these very pretty attractive statues of wyverns like perched looking outward from its parapets uh, and uh, being the middle of the day there is a lot of business sort of a lot of hustle and bustle coming back and forth across this bridge and we focus in on a woman standing at the edge of the bridge looking out over the water uh, biding her time and waiting for something to begin. Amy, would you please describe your character? Sure. So she is short, but sturdy. <laughs> uh, she's about 210, but she's she's got just that natural muscle of having worked uh, physical work her whole life. Uh, she's got tan olive skin just dotted with freckles from the sun. Long black hair just sort of pulled back into a messy braid that's clearly been just in that braid for at least several days. Uh, some would call her face plain. She's got sort of thin lips and a crooked nose, but she's got big, dark eyes and those freckles and a very, very sweet smile that draws people in. And she's just very plainly dressed. So just sort of light fabrics, uh, really worn leather boots, and just the biggest knapsack that can fit <laughs> on her itty bitty frame. <laughs> 210. 210. She's so small. All muscle. <laughs> Uh, to clarify about the fact that she's 210, is this a human being? No, no, she's oh. a halfling. There we go. <laughs> uh, you stand sort of looking out over the river as you wait for what you know is going to be happening on mm. this bridge, uh, or at least beginning mm. on this bridge. Uh, and you look out over the water, what do you think of this cityscape before you? It's amazing. It is bigger and grander and more interesting than anything I've ever seen in my life. I love it. Also standing here looking over this, you'd find it's warmer than you expected here. It's like, it, it is a very, this very beautiful summery day. Mm -hmm. There's almost a warmth wafting up to you where you were standing. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> As you stand there waiting, you hear a voice go, uh, if you're here for the tour, uh, please, Gather around to me. Anyone here for the tour? Hi, or yes, hi, hi. Hello. Oh my and gosh. A, a group of other people gather around this uh, young human woman, uh, hair tied back in like a tight braid, uh, wearing 
like a, a sort of very very simple like peasanty tunic and uh, trousers and like uh, only semi well fitting vest that looks like she probably didn't pick it out for herself. And there's a little name tag on it that says Astrid. Uh, she goes, uh, "Hello, if you are here for the sights and sounds of Neverwinter walking tour, uh, I am Astrid." Hi, Astrid. Hello, nice Hi. to meet you. Uh, I am Astrid, your tour guide. Uh, I will be showing you around the city today. Uh, I think I see a lot of eager faces. Who here's ever been to Neverwinter before? <laughs> I see everyone, no one else has raised their hands and this woman is not shaking her head emphatically. I've never been here before. I, I thought that's probably why you were on a walking tour. Well, I have some exciting things to show you. I bet you do, Astrid. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, what was your name, ma'am? Oh, I'm Roz. Oh, well, it's a pleasure to meet you, Roz. You seem like a very friendly person, and uh, I think we're gonna have a good time today. I think so too, Astrid. So, uh, <laughs> a lot of you may have heard a few things about this city in the past. You may know we have been through some tough times. Uh, the city was very nearly destroyed about 30 years ago. Oh, no. When Yes, I'm afraid. Yeah. That's awful. It was. It was a very awful time. The city was in a lot of trouble for a while. Uh, until our current Lord Protector, uh, Lord Never Ember, uh, began a large-scale effort to rebuild the city. Uh, build a lot of what was destroyed by Mount Hotenau. Uh, and, as you can see, build up a little tourism here in the city. Uh, you may wonder why it's called Neverwinter here. That is because even though we are so far north, it is almost never snowy. It's almost never cold. The reason for that, that river right below you. Wow. It is heated by the volcanoes near the city, and that heat from the water keeps us warm all year round. Yes, it also makes our fields very fertile. Of course, that volcano did also destroy a great deal of the city. Oh, no. <laughs> I did say that moments ago. But so it is a, a blessing and a curse to us. Uh, you know, uh, there are some who say with all of the uh, bad things that have happened to some of the settlements in this region that we're cursed here. But I like to just think that never winter is never boring. <laughs> I'm glad you liked that joke, Roz. It was a good joke, Astrid. Thank you. <laughs> if you'll follow me, we'll see some of the very nice sights and sounds of the city. Uh, any questions before we start? <laughs> oh, do you have a question, Rob? Yeah, um, what's your favorite thing about Neverwinter, Astrid? My favorite thing. You know I love answering that question. Um, my favorite thing is um it's the people good hearty people here they've been through a lot and they managed to keep going stay happy whatever life throws at them are you you almost look like you're tearing up i'm good <laughs> and if you'll go right this way uh we shift our focus again <laughs> i want this forever <laughs> walking to her guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Me too! <laughs> I like to think that she gasped again because she had already forgotten <laughs> in the time that she heard about the accident. She's like, oh god, that's right. <laughs> so, uh, someone's got to do something. <laughs> yeah, who's on this? Come on. We shift our focus once again. Uh, across uh, this, part, this sort of um, western part of the city uh, to a sort of grander, older-looking section. Um, parts that were never quite destroyed and needed rebuilding, the furthest away from the uh, the volcano's eruption, uh, and to a, re a part of the city where a number of the city's temples stand. Grand old cathedrals, um, these monolithic, beautiful, art beautiful sort of artistic buildings uh, devoted to one or another of the many gods worshipped in this region. Uh, and this being such a sort of large 
and uh, cosmopolitan city. There are a great number of deities represented. We go to, however, one of the slightly smaller of these cathedrals. Um, a, uh, a slightly shorter, slightly narrower building. Uh, one might look at it and figure there aren't quite as many people. There are people here who worship this deity, but not necessarily as many as some of the other gods, which would be accurate. Um, a uh, small temple to a dwarven god, which anyone who knows such things would recognize from the statues out front as being the god Berenar True Silver. We go inside, and we find our way to a bedroom in the back, where uh, a visitor to this temple is lodged and is at the moment gathering his things uh not necessarily getting dressed for the day as Jaden was but gathering his things to go out and uh do his work um eric would you please describe your character yeah we uh we see a dwarf uh as stout as he is old he is in uh, very much his twilight years not a young spry dwarf at all uh, many gray hairs in his uh, coppery head. The hairstyle is braided, but instead of a natural end of the beard and the uh, hair, there's a neat chop, very uniform, and that's kind of a theme that you see around. Everything is worn, everything is aged, but everything is organized, uh, neat, almost uh, perfect. Uh, the face is very scarred, very dirty, pores are clogged, uh, the hygiene is very questionable for this dwarf. Uh, he's lived his whole life in the mines uh, with his family, and a family value was uh, not hygiene. Uh, he's out for the first time. Uh, he hasn't seen the sun much. He, he, he has, I want to say resting bitch face, but even when it's not resting, <laughs> he's still got a bitch face. He Just looks, bitch face. He looks perpetually active. Bitch face. active resting bitch active. Face. <laughs> he, he perpetually looks grumpy. Continual flame that continual <laughs> bitch face. Yeah. Uh, he's very uh, curt. He is very short. He walks very. Well, yeah, uh, he's a dwarf. <laughs> <laughs> he walks with. Uh, <laughs> he walks with purpose, and uh, he's finishing a prayer as he starts his day. He uh, finishes his prayer with, uh, "May you light the hearth and warm my home." And then he buttons his uh, holy symbol. It's two intertwined rings, and he leaves his room. Actually. Uh before you are able to leave your room. He there makes is, to leave his room. <laughs> there is a Does knock, he get there? There is a knock at the door. Enter. Uh, the door opens and another dwarf enters. Um, uh, the priest of this temple. Uh, old, very visibly old, even by dwarf standards. Sort of very white hair and beard. Uh, like little braids into the, the beard, a little pendant with the, the two rings of Baron True Silver dangling from his neck, wearing sort of very flowing priestly robes. Um, very sort of thoughtful, wise, almost sad eyes. And he uh, comes into the room and goes, uh, you're almost uh, ready to go for the day, Rokka. Yes, Aldrich, I am called. And I answer. Um, we're just about ready to get going and set up by the chasm. Um, we're a little low on a couple of supplies. I wonder if I might uh, impose upon you to uh, take a little detour and go to the market on your way. Grab us say, a couple of pounds of potatoes and uh, have them meet us at the site. Aldrich, the market. <laughs> Yes, we need the potatoes to make the food we give to the poor. Aldrich, I understand the importance of potatoes for the poor. What I don't <laughs> understand is why I'm being tasked to go to market when there are acolytes, when there are studies, when there are countless people in this monastery besides me to go to market. I mean... It's a lot of Jewish operation. Uh, we, those who aren't uh, needed to stay here and continue their regular duties, are needed to set up where we're going. I just figured since, you know, we have an 
extra hand, uh, more than we usually have when we do these, that extra hand might be willing to, you know, go get the food supplies to provide to the unfortunate and needy he volunteered to help us with. <laughs> I will go to market. I appreciate it. There's one three blocks down the street. So Great. The building, they'll give you a good price. They know us. Just tell them that you're there for me. It will be done. Thank you, little girl. <clears throat> See you in the castle district. Uh, I thank you for your help. He turns and goes. Uh, you make your way out of the um, the temple and down the street to the market. There is indeed uh, a stall very near the entrance to the market uh, where there is um, a, a like a guy selling all manner of potato, parsnip, rutabaga, turnip, just a huge number of root vegetables. Uh, a human man selling these. There is another dwarf back to you standing at the um, at the booth like kind of bickering with him as you approach and you just make out sort of the tail end of what's being said and sort of like I'm telling you you give me good price now you are getting in on the ground floor of something grand think of yourself as an investor I promise I come back I pay you double what you want for our potatoes the guy goes I'm not giving you potatoes on credit. I'm sorry, I've never <laughs> met you. Uh, and you approach. <clears throat> they turn and look at you. The guy goes, how can, how can I help you? Potatoes. I can help you with that. Do you have money on you? Yes. Great. And he turns and starts to get potatoes, and the other dwarf turns and looks at you and goes, I didn't believe it! Rufka! Rufka Ramika! Yes. You don't recognize me. No. Gundren! Gundren Rockseeker! Gundren Rockseeker! <laughs> <laughs> you saved How my are life ya? two years ago out uh, around Long Sabo. I did, and how has life been treating you since? Life, I tell you, Rothka has been treating me fantastically. The brothers and I, we are onto something. We have gone. Uh, I don't want to go into too many details. Sort of a silent partner. Been urging me to be a little coy with it. But I will say the uh, mining claim of a lifetime. Mining claim of a lifetime. Yay! <laughs> now, Gundren, no. last we spoke, you were spinning tales of a mining claim. Now... Is this more fantasy you're talking about, or is this... Oh, this is very real, I assure you. We have stumbled into something that is going to make us set for life. This, mm. this is the claim we've been looking for all these years. Uh, you know, you're a, uh, you're a capable uh, combatant adventuring type. That is a... I've seen you fight. Yes, that is a... Lifetime I've left behind, and one oh. I don't like to return oh, to. Sorry to hear that. Uh, we could use a few extra hands, security as it were. Sadly, Gundren, my path diverges from you. Oh, that's a shame. That's actually what I was in town looking for. A uh, few adventuring types to help us out with, uh, at the very least, a little <laughs> transport. If you change your mind, think you're looking for something, uh, I'd love to have you. We'd pay well. Gundren, I may... Wandering priest with many questions. I'm no adventurer. Just a dwarf picking up potatoes. Uh, I'm sorry to hear that. I'll be in town another day or two. Uh, stay at the Driftwood Tavern. I'll visit. Please. Uh, After and hours. If you happen to run across hmm. anyone else, anyone you think might be, uh, you know, capable looking for that kind of work, <laughs> we're looking for a few hands. Maybe send them my way. I will, Gundren. I will indeed. Where's your running into you, boyo? Uh, come, on, come by the inn later tonight. We'll toss one back. Reminisce. In a market full of strangers. I did not expect to see you, my friend. What are the odds? Maybe it's a sign. <laughs> <laughs> Check your 
side? <laughs> How many sides are in this market? You may be right, Gudrun. The path will be revealed. Uh, <laughs> anyway, Riri, uh, I've got to be off. I'll see you later. Find someone else who's willing to give me food supplies. Uh, let a re- I go reasonable. I wish you luck finding your adventurer. Thank you very much. Or adventurers, plural. And he uh, turns and goes. The merchant comes back to the uh, <laughs> the counter and uh, sort of puts down a huge sack of just russet potatoes. Like, all right, how many were you looking for? I just pull out all the money that I was given by Aldrich and I just dump it on the counter. That much. <laughs> Get another sack of potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> this is exactly how it goes when I ask you to run to the grocery store for me. <laughs> it's always gold coins. <laughs> <laughs> exact same level of attitude. Yeah, yeah. Yep. We uh, move away from this marketplace and we move uh, to another part of the city, uh, somewhere far nearer the poorer neighborhoods. Uh, oh, who's it going to be this time? <laughs> around, uh, Me again. <laughs> Back to Ron. Later in the tour. Uh, the ruined na- closer, not in, but closer to the ruined neighborhoods around the chasm, uh, to a small, somewhat uh, threadbare apartment where a uh, woman is hurrying around, uh, putting things into a bag. Jamie. No. Uh, <laughs> Jen, please yes. go ahead and describe your character. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, um, you see, uh, uh, she's a high elf. She's about 5'9". She's slender, she's wiry, she's got kind of cropped, short, brown, boyish hair. Um, she's rushing around, packing things up in a hurry, throwing things in as she can. She's, um, she's about, for an elf like a young adult, which is around like 45 or 50, um, and she has skin that's so pale, it's, it's almost bluish. Um, in the light, and uh, like you look at me when you said that. <laughs> you understand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we have to color correct Amy. She's yeah. so blue. We have the red turned up all the way. Um, yeah, so dark hair and uh, piercing blue eyes, flecked with gold. Um, she wears kind of subtle black leather armor over very sort of boyish brown cotton street clothes, um, worn with an eye for not catching the eye. Um, she's got practical leather boots and uh, she has a couple of daggers. You can't see them, they're hidden. But <laughs> for those playing at home, she has a few daggers hidden on her. Um, she's quite sort of... <laughs> well, now you know. Um, she's quite uh, confident in her movements, but clearly right now, very anxious and very in, in a hurry. Uh, and you continue putting things uh, into your uh, bag mm-hmm. when all of a sudden you hear a knock at the door. Who is it? Delivery! Come back later! Uh, I, uh, I, I don't think it should. I think it seems urgent. Package got air holes in it. I don't want to leave it unattended. Okay. Come and, like, crack the door open. You crack the door and, bam, it blows inward. And a man in dark leather armors, like a dagger already out, storms into the room, grabs you by the collar, and sort of slams you into the wall, puts the dagger up, goes. Boom, win, right? To my friends. Ah, what should I call you? What do you want? Oh, I'm here on a behalf of a mutual friend of ours. Did Greg send you? Greg certainly did send me. <laughs> it's Greg. <laughs> you know, Greg. 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 We all know Greg. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Fantasy Just saying, in a fantasy world, you could name someone literally anything. The fact it's that true. his parents went, this mm. one's a Greg. Yeah. Just yeah. really Greg. Speaks... <laughs> Greg. I, I made person. up the backstory, so I'm his parents. I called him Greg. <laughs> what are you doing to you? I was going to refer to him by last <laughs> name, and you out. went straight to Greg. Uh, it's Greg with four Gs. Oh, all right. Just and one in the front, two think. in the front, two in the back. <laughs> <laughs> not where you think. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh. <laughs> so he looks at you and goes, where there's I think Greg's not doing so well right now, is he? Uh-huh. 
through no fault of mine. See, that's not what Greg says, and that's not what I think either. As far as we're concerned, you are very much to blame for Greg's current predicament. He got himself in trouble, and I'm taking care of myself. Yeah, he said you'd say that. You're a real take care of yourself uh, kind of person, eh? No consideration for people who've been good to you over the years? Sounds like he was being pretty good to himself over that time, too. They set Greg a pretty high bail, and you're gonna pay it. With what? I'm sure you got something squirreled away somewhere. So, you figure it out, you get the money, you have two days. You haven't shown up with that money by then, I'll come back and I'll make you not Greg's problem anymore, nor mine. Do we understand each other? Can we work out a deal on credit, or...? No. City Watch doesn't take credit for bail. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll have it to you right by then. No. That'll be, yeah. Try and slip away or nothing, or we'll find you. Me. Slip no. away. No. <laughs> Not like you've maybe done in the past. You don't know about my past. What are you talking about? I'll what know what about do you know about my past? What Greg told me. Okay. Listen, um, I will have the money for you. <laughs> Obviously, I'll have the money for you. You know me. I can... Pick any pocket, I can work any crowd. I'll find something. Oh, I'll, I'll, it'll Morning be- after next, or you got worries. Mm-hmm. Okay. And should I meet you at the, the bail place, or where, what's the, I haven't got really details of this plan right here. I'll be back here. Okay, great. Great, yeah, just You're go on. You're not here, we have a problem. Okay, you go on your way. Um, it's gonna be, don't, don't worry about it. All right. Seems we understand each other. Yup. Go on about your day. You have a lovely one, yeah? You too. All right. And he lets you go, puts the dagger down, cheats mm -hmm. it, goes. <clears throat> Best of luck. Better get about it. Yep. And he uh, takes off out of the room and back out the way he came. What do you do? Um, <clears throat> she's going to search through her things and see if she still has um, the emerald dagger that she had from a you recent... You search through things for a little bit, you do find it. Okay. The back of a drawer. She kind of um, turns it over, assesses it with like a wistful look on her face. It's like, wow, fuck. Um, and grabs her weapons, grabs everything that she might need to travel with and packs this dagger away to bring it with her. Uh, you take off out of your rooms. Where do you start heading when you leave here with that dagger in hand? Yes, um, she's gonna head to the tavern. Um, you know the one. The one, the one where your uh, associate is yeah, located. Angie, um, Angie? Angie's tavern. She's gonna head over there to see if she can get a little money. A little, and you make your way liquidity. in the uh, direction of your good friend Angie's tavern, mm -hmm. uh, the Shady Nook. Thank you. Uh, I knew that. We, mm -hmm. we, all, we both knew that. I just, you said it first. That's yeah, of all. course. <laughs> uh, we uh, depart from this moment um, and we shift over to the Shady Nook itself where uh, there is a bustling sort of midday crowd here as well. Uh, it's a somewhat more dour place. People are a little less boisterous, a little more keeping themselves, but there is still some degree of chatter. And, uh, a, um, sort of tall, um, almost a little Zoftig, like, broad-shouldered woman with fire-red hair tied back in a ponytail is, like, cleaning glasses and looks up as the, uh, the sort of, uh, slumped and awkward figure of Ollie comes in through the door. Uh, how many how many people it's in the tavern kind of bustling? Maybe a dozen or so. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna go up to um, the, the woman at the bar. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's, would you be would, would you be Angie? I am Angie. What can I do for you? 
I was... Sorry, I just love that even in fantasy, every Angie just sounds like that. Yeah, There's yeah, nothing yeah, you can yeah, do about Angie, it. You're going to yeah, talk just like true, that. Uh, I didn't invent Angie. Uh, the player did. And I was instructed uh, that she sounds like Natasha Leone, and this is the best I can do. Amazing. What a cool idea. It is exactly yeah. that play I might have been. <laughs> yeah. um, <clears throat> Uh, so, so Mag, Mag, Magda from uh, sea, the Seashoals uh, has sent me... Yeah, how are you, darling? <laughs> I can't do a good Natasha Leone. I'm yeah, sorry, Yeah, you I'm shouldn't trying. have told us that's what you were aiming for. <laughs> <laughs> we really liked the Angie voice. I'm, I'm a that. character guy, but I'm not an impression guy. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, she, she sent me, said, you might have something to, to sell her. She's looking for the, uh, the Dwarven Ale. Yeah, I wasn't sure exactly how open I was supposed to be about that. <laughs> no one around here cares. Oh, okay. They're all okay, drinking then it. Yes, yeah, yes. I've got a couple extra casts oh, I can great. send her way. She yeah. give you some money? Yeah, yes, yes. Yes. Can I see the money? Oh, yeah. I pull out the money she gave me. <laughs> there we go. Well, that all adds up. And, uh, to what do I owe the pleasure of sending me, uh, a handsome guy like yourself? I was just trying to help. I know. That's all. I I didn't mean to make you feel like you weren't helping. I was just uh, I was just trying to be friendly. You mm. doing all right? Fine. Come on, hun. I'm I'm I, I'm just I. Was you don't seem for like work. the type who laughs a lot, huh? I don't know what gave you that impression. You want to drink while you're waiting? I can get it brought around. I. Yeah. One on the house. What's okay. your poison? I mean, I had a beer at the Seashells that I didn't finish. Whatever. How about a mead? Sure. Yeah. Here you go. Pours a little glass. Puts rings. I'll be right back. Great. Be sad looking enough, and you just drink for free. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Dang, and two okay. people favors. Yeah. Uh, just, you sit there. You take a sip. It is. Needs a little, a little thick and syrupy, very sweet, but in like a pleasant way. It's nice. Okay. Uh, and as you are sitting there having your drink, waiting for Angie to come back, uh, a woman comes in and sits down next to you. Bummer. Angie, Angie, can I, Angie, Angie? Angie's in the back room. She's not in, in the bar. <laughs> she went in the back to get she just, she just went, went. She just went back. Okay. She in a good mood. How did, how did she, how did you gauge her? She seemed nice. Good. Good. Great. Great. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Whew. Angie comes back what out. What vibe am I getting oh, off of here? <laughs> <laughs> Make an insight check. First roll! Vibe check, vibe, vibe check, vibe, vibe check. check. Well, that's oh. very cocked. Um... <laughs> That's my vibe. <laughs> uh, insight. Um, that's a fourteen. She's rolling it on you. I have no control on this one. What is what is a fourteen get her? Oh. That's a vibe. Yeah, uh, like trying to project confidence, but kind of a little anxious, nervous. Definitely some spiky energy. Cool. That makes two of us. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Angie comes back in. I don't know goes, if we're in character, or out of character <laughs> right now. <laughs> Boom. Applies for everything. Oh, oh, you're asking about my cat. Sorry. No. <laughs> comes back in from the corner. Okay, I got a couple guys bringing some stuff up from the cellar. Uh, we got some good stuff. Angie, oh! my girl. Hi. How are you, doll? It's so nice to see you. You look you well. Oh, you oh look gosh. fantastic Thank as you. always. You. You're glowing. Oh my gosh, you thank you so much. You're usually glowing. Amazing, thank you so much. Um, so... You, you got kind of a spiky energy to you today, you alright? <laughs> you know, I have um, a great opportunity for you. Okay. Um, I know you're always looking for interesting things. Mm -hmm. Um... Uh, anyway, uh... Oh, this is my new friend. He's here on the chore from Magda. Okay, he's cool, cool, cool. Um, so, so I have... So far seems it. Cute, oh. right? Huh? Obviously. Yeah. Angie, um, yeah. I have got something for you. What do you think of this? And she brings out the emerald encrusted dagger. That is a very, very nice little piece. Isn't it? Uh, where'd you get this? Oh, don't you worry about it. Friend of mine. 
um, locally sourced. Of course. But yeah. When uh, uh, the dagger comes out, do I know anything about that dagger? Is it just a fancy dagger? Give me a history check. Mod 20. It's not anything, like, specific mm-hmm. that you know about. It looks like just, like, a very mm-hmm. nice sort of... It's, like, more an art piece than it mm. is a functional okay. weapon. But it's it's a very nice make. It's, like, it looks, like, valuable, but it's not... Okay. It, it's not, like, some important part okay. of Okay. Just It's a it's a interesting mm-hmm. thing. But it's it's very interesting that this person pulled this out at this tavern. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just gonna... I can probably get a good price for this. Might take a little time to find a buyer, but I can give you a... I can give you an advance up front. What could you give me in a full amount earlier? Say, today. Angie, come on, we're friends. I've brought you things before. Give me a persuasion check. (laughs) Get it. (laughs) Uh, That would be an eight. Angie. Look, I can't. My give, girl. I can't give you full price on the thing until I find a buyer. I don't have that kind of liquid cash on hand. I know, Angie, but you have so many friends in this town. Surely we could figure something out. I give you fifteen gold up front. You come back in a couple of days. I'll have more for you. Honey, you're hurting me. Come on. I'm sorry. It's you all can I do, can do right now. You can do better. I genuinely can't right at this moment. Uh, you know I'm going to pay you a fair price. Angie. Business dries up for a fence who cheats people. I don't got any more on me at the moment. I know, I know, but I haven't been clear. This was maybe uh, more important to me, and I've been your friend over these these years. You can have one more persuasion <laughs> check, but then all. But then, that's the last one. I just won my persuasion check on the DM to yeah. give me another persuasion check. one more check. and that's it. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Man, it's landed so right. decisively. Um, <laughs> that was a funk. <laughs> that was an eleven. Then she just lets it's out a giant. Can, it's part. It's, 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 it's all I can. It's all I can. It's all I can do for you right now. Okay. But I, it'll it should only take me a couple of days. I can have more money for you soon. You know, I will get it to you. I'm sure you'll be fine in the meantime. You okay. can. You're always finding yourself in some kind of work, some kind of caper or adventure. I'm sure you can. Do you know of any quick work going that could make me some cash? That would take me out of town? Out of town? Um. Are you okay? (laughs) Why would you ask that? Of course I'm okay. How are you? Are you okay? You don't look so okay. There was a dwarf in here (gasps) earlier looking to hire people for some kind of job, but I don't know where he went. Okay. Said his name was Rock something. Okay. Um, where did he go? I don't know. I, I mean, he was out of town, and this didn't seem like his kind of place exactly. So I guess somewhere in the um, okay. the richer part of town. Yeah. Do exactly you have where. money? Are you interested in an emerald dagger? Is that? I I I, I don't have much use for an emerald dagger, but if if you want, I can go with you to try to find the guy who's selling, or buy, would buy things, or I don't... Adventuring! Is Sorry. he okay? I genuinely I, don't know. I really... I don't know if we're in conversation or therapy right now. I'm a little worried. Um, yeah, buddy, you can come with me. Sure. Um, so you said somewhere in the richer part of town there's a dwarf imagine, giving jobs. There's I, nothing else you can give me, Angie. Even I, it's all I got right now. If he comes back in, I can ask a few questions. You come back in later tonight, I'll let you know if I have more on that. Okay. Thank you. I just, you know, I've done so much. I thought we were friends. We, we are friends. <laughs> I'm doing as much as I can for you. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm. I don't have magic powers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. And as the two of you depart together to go on a wild goose chase for a dwarf looking to hire people. Yeah. Uh, we uh make our way. Uh, hardly very far at all, around the corner, in fact, where uh, some of the priests of Baronar Tree Silver have set up a little uh, sort of soup cooking station and like a bread line and are ministering to the poor, among them, uh, Prothgar, who showed up with the potatoes. And 
you are in the middle of sliding out bowls of soup to the poor when a figure walks up. Someone... He's uh, what? what? Sladling? Sl- sladling? I said what I said. <laughs> <laughs> look it up. It's a word. I'm new here. I'm trying Don't to figure out if I'm missing magic that's term. A, <laughs> that's, a D, that's a D&D oh, term. That yeah. is definitely yeah. going to... That's, 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 that's a spell component, Roll right? Roll the sladle. Roll the sladle. Sladle check. Sladle check. Sladle check. <laughs> um, Nine. Ooh. <laughs> Actually, with sladling, low rolls are better. Oh. Ooh. It's the gulf. Fuck yeah. You, uh... A... A... Somewhat unexpected, somewhat more well-dressed figure than the rest of the people approaching your little soup stand approaches. You look like... Ah! <laughs> you have no need for a soup kitchen. Uh, well, actually I do, but not for soup. I am here on behalf of uh, <laughs> Sildar of the Lord's Alliance. I'm here to uh, stand by and uh, protect the um, dirty people. <laughs> they so? are not dirty. They are on hard times. Hmm. Well, that's their path has taken them from where they want to be, and we are here to lighten that. You'd be well to remember that. Yes, that's why I'm here. Uh, believe me, I relate. I have fallen on hard times myself. As have you, clearly. You look very expressive. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, look like you know what's going on around here. Um, is there some place I should stand where everyone can get the... I can see and everyone can see me? <laughs> Go ahead and start pacing that way. I'll let you know. Can I be clear to the audience at home that Eric is not bass boosted? That's what he sounds yeah. like. <laughs> That's it's Eric. delightful to be here. Yeah. It's like a reverberation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Start making your paces that way. That I'll way. let you know when you're at the perfect spot. Excellent. Can do. Here I go. Shall I count? By One, all. Mm. two, three, mm. four. <laughs> Five. Is it going to be more than ten? It's going to think? be more than ten. All right, I, I shall count the rest in my brain. Absolutely. <laughs> and I will continue count to watch. Aldrich <laughs> just sidles up to Rothgar goes, This is what they send us, can you believe it? This is what they sent us. I'm trying to see how far I can send it back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, meanwhile, as you guys are ladling this stuff up, uh, a... Large cluster of people come along the street yeah. nearby, sort of gawking at the chasm that is opposite you. <laughs> the, this big, like, <laughs> almost canyon that cuts through the middle of this rough neighborhood of the city. Aldrich? Hey. Aldrich. Yeah, I... Did you know it was tour day when you <laughs> put me on the soup kitchen? Oh, this thing happens a couple times a week. I hate market... But not as much as I hate Tour Day! <laughs> really, tours make you angry. Not the tours themselves, the groups of people they bring in, uh. the personalities, the loudness, the people asking you incessant questions that you've heard a million times that if you just look around, you could answer yourself. Wow, how did this happen again? <laughs> <laughs> a, a really good question, Roz. Uh, scholars say that uh, around a hundred years ago, Uh during the spell plague, Uh very unstable magical energy and a lot of dangerous creatures were unleashed deep beneath the city within the Underdark. (gasps) (laughs) You don't need to gasp every time I name a new place. Okay, sorry. Okay, so, 30 years ago, when Mount Hotenau erupted and caused all kinds of destruction in the city... Oh, no! Couldn't even get through that, huh? <laughs> I'm so broken up. <laughs> oh. I know you are, Ross. Mm-hmm. At this point in the tour, I know. The chasm broke open during the earthquakes that the eruption caused, and all manner of horrible, unstable magic and dangerous creatures spilled up into the city, and for a number of years, things would occasionally just spill out of this place. It was a great danger to the people who live in this part of the city. Don't. Don't you do it. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. 
Oh no. <laughs> Not to worry though. Oh, you <laughs> turned around fast. They... You're an excellent storyteller. Thank you. Thank you so much. They uh, had court wizards magically seal up the crack in the earth. The chasm itself remains, but the uh, creatures no longer spill up from it. Just the odd trace of ma uh, magical energy. Uh, occasionally detectable, but nothing any of you need to worry about. It is perfectly safe. Whew. And <laughs> then you all hear screaming. Okay. <laughs> you two hear it too as you come down the street towards this scene. People turn. Astrid herself goes, Oh God, what is that? We're gonna die! And turns. And p the crowd begins to scatter. The only people who seem uh, like to be not instantly, instinctually turning the table and running are the five of you. Okay. All of you have seen some degree of danger before. Yeah. And you watch, maybe through bravery, maybe just like slightly frozen in place, as people scatter and three very strange things emerge from the chasm. One. Uh, is what looks like a slightly translucent hand, almost made of electricity. The third looks like a very large snowflake with, like, an angry face forming out from its patterned crystals. Mm -mm. And the third, what almost <laughs> looks like just a weird, floating, undulating blob of just crude oil that occasionally the bubbles and oozes of it form facial features for half a second that then recede into it Are we it again. just fighting Pokemon? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not fighting Pokemon, no. Damn you, went, it. you went first, I mean, third, you... third, babe. I love your energy, <laughs> but also we all had you go first, third, third. The second uh, is, a is a mystery. Oh, no, no, no. you counted one, third, three, third. three. <laughs> That's how we count in Neverwinter. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah true. Numbers are hard. That's <laughs> true. Okay. The snowflake is second. Okay. Yeah. Happy. Thank you. Yes. I, 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 the delighted. clarification is very important. We couldn't have figured that out. <laughs> <laughs> if anything, it speaks to how dumb we are. We're like, there's two thirds there. there. How can there be two three? <laughs> what? Yeah. Yeah. I promise, over time in this stream, I will learn how numbers work. <laughs> Don't, Don't ever. make promises. Don't change. We can't follow through. That's on. the real legacy. <laughs> All right. So everybody please roll initiative. Yeah. All right. Okay, okay. And then I add my... <laughs> You got it. <laughs> Initiative. Uh-oh! <laughs> I have nothing written there! Oh no! Jaden from where I had originally placed him on his map. There we go. And... here we go. <laughs> Battle map! Go! Look at that. Wow. Wow. All right. Uh, so he can see. Oh yeah. So, uh, anyone yeah. have a number above 20? Okay, anybody 15 to 20? Oh my oh, god! Shit. Sweet Jesus! What do you got? 20. Total. Anyone else have a 20? Great. Wrong win. <laughs> uh, Amy? 16. Right? Yes. <laughs> 19. 19. I also got 16. Alright. So. And Tim, I'm sorry to see. <laughs> Jamie, you're just too it, far it away, huh? Right. I am really far <laughs> off. It does make <laughs> a lot of sense. Dex for it. Uh, my Dex yeah. is plus four. He's probably stopped when he heard the screaming. Like, uh, 19 <laughs> plus four. Yeah. I gotta yeah. get back there. Yeah. Um, but it, Tim, if you need to see this, what they can see. That's perfect. Beautiful. Excellent. Beautiful. It worked out well. Excellent. All right, wait. Eric, you had a 19, right? Yes. Okay. And Amy and I both had 16. Uh, deck scores? Um, 15. 12. Okay. Uh, what do you have? 14. Oh! Just... They're not bad. Just, oh, really just bad. right there, just right there. I was, I was way down the street, y'all. Dang, <laughs> our initiative was really taken today. Like, dang, for us. It'll never happen Please again. Solid. No, this is the only high roll I've done, and I think the only one I'll do, yeah. <laughs> sounds right, sounds the right. The entire game. The only one you need. Yeah. Yeah. Initiative. Uh, Historically, charge in there first one. and roll us a one. Yeah. Yeah. Roll high on. Eight. 
Daniel. Uh, no, I said 14. 14. <laughs> One day you're gonna learn how numbers work. <laughs> it's not important for this game, though. It's not, no, no, no. Very close. It won't come up again. Fun fact, I learned today at the pharmacy there's a nationwide shortage on ADHD medication. Oh, oh boy. I already knew that for reasons. <laughs> <laughs> I Apparently it only hasn't affected me so f until today. Oh no. Because I have a weird dosage. Mm. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, we are in. Ronwin. You were up first. There are strange things that seem to be made of energy and weather and goo mm, mm. floating up out of the chasm. <laughs> okay. Uh, People are running and screaming. Yeah. How did that get me? Where am I? You are <laughs> right over there. Oh, yes. And I'm, okay. Okay. Um, I'm gonna just get on in there, I suppose. Um, my speed is 30 feet. So I'm gonna go, oh, are those little guys, those are the scary guys. Okay, mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna, uh, yeah, I'm gonna try and actually. Side note, these are not direct stat blocks out of the book, so everything on this is all of Rob Carlos original. Amazing. Oh, oh, thank you so much to Rob Props Carlos. to our artist, Rob Carlos. Who did all the character art, and then like two days ago, I was like, I thought of some monsters. Do you have time? Rob is the best. Rob I thought always. of some monsters. It's <laughs> usually yes. I wake, <laughs> would wake up my mummy as a child. I thought of some monsters. I did then ask Rob if I could sleep in there to feel safe. Sure. Mm, that's fair. Rob's so you're blocked on his social media. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. But he did Rob, give you these amazing yeah. tokens You said that and block. Rob is no longer working with us. Uh, <laughs> um, so I'm going to actually not move that much closer. I'm going to go like uh, 15 feet to my to, 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 to the right of where I am um, to get like a clearer shot on that guy directly below me if I move 15 feet. Do you know what I mean? Wait, say, say that again? Okay. Uh... <laughs> This me, yep, to there, to be above that guy. Great, and then and then fifteen feet to the south. Um, no, then I'm gonna throw a dagger at him. <laughs> okay, so you're just going, you're just going twenty feet over to be yeah, just to get like a clearer shot. That that is the that is the electrical hand. Yes, yes. You. Yeah, okay. Um, I'm gonna try and throw a dagger at that. Um, and I'm gonna roll for my dagger. Do it. Can I do it? Two at once? I forget how rogues work. Or is it just one? I just do one, right? You can do one, because it's a light weapon, if you have two of them, you can throw one with the other hand as a bonus action. Ooh, then I'll do that. Well, first things first, let's do the main hand. Okay. You got it. Not so good. Um, I got a 14 for that one. Uh, a 14 uh, does hit. That is respectable. Okay. A 14. Okay, okay. That's right. We're level one. This is yeah. chill. We're 14 great. is me. Yeah. I'm two and great. <laughs> um, so, Baby. my first instinct, thing that I don't recognize, very worried about it, um, don't want it to come towards me. Shink, dagger towards it. Gonna try my other dagger as well. But oh, just kidding. One, that, that one hit. Go ahead, roll damage for that one first. Okay, that's right. Yep. I remember how this works. Yep. I played before. <laughs> um, and the damage for that is a uh, big boy five. Damn. Yeah. Well, I rolled a one, but it's five total damage. Got it. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, you run up and just unhook a dagger from your belt and mm. overhand mm. throw, mm. and just sort of this very graceful whirl through the air. It strikes this thing and goes clean through it. It doesn't appear entirely <laughs> solid. It does like tear into it a little, and you watch like little little sort of arcs of the electricity just up from like where it drags through, almost like it is cutting it, but it's not like there's flesh there to really do total damage to. It looks like it's affected it a little, but mm, it's not mm. a full effect. Okay. Um, uh, then I'm gonna throw my other dagger with my other hand. Okay. So go ahead and roll to attack. That was um, 13. Just hits. Yes. And that one does... Um, and this is without the modifier. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, without the modifier for the second action one? is without the modifier. The damage? Yeah. Uh, so that's one damage again. It does do one damage. Yay. Yeah, it does. Can't half the one. 
but it does like just graze it and you watch like it, again like almost even like little little just like particles of electricity just mm. pfft, off it like as if a little blood was like coming out but it's just energy okay uh any any further movement nope All that's right. what we're gonna do for now um the lobby oil thing is gonna go um no and you know what it's gonna do is it is gonna surge forward and just like the like facial features form in it again for a second and a mouth appears and it just and like a big like like a rippling ball of the oil material it seems to be made of like flies out flies over to where you are standing Bronwyn and hits the ground right beneath you and just spreads out into like a little puddle of grease on the ground right uh, right about there I light it for me on the map oh it's can you not? I drew a little thing on the map. Is it's it not? black on gray. I, I will draw it in a different color. <laughs> Here, it's going to be bright lime green. There we go. Yay. Amazing. Amazing. Uh, it wow, so bright. Oh, cool. So, uh, Bronwyn, I am going to need uh, a dexterity saving throw. Oh, please. that's what I'm good at. <laughs> Get it. <laughs> Wait, watch me roll really low. You got this. You got this. Oh, okay. That's okay. Oh, dexterity that's saving throw 16. A 16 is uh, a success. Uh, so, uh, yeah, this stuff just by you, and you feel yourself starting to slip, but you, like, steady yourself, plant, and do not fall down. Uh, that is gonna be the end of its turn. Um, so, uh, Hothgar, you are up. Uh, I look to Aldrich first. The vulnerable. Organize, protect, evacuate. We'll get them back, we'll protect them. Aye. Thank you. And then I turn around, I close the distance towards the nearest monster, which I believe... Which one is that one? Um, that'd probably be the one directly below you there, yeah? Is that the oily boy? Oily boy is there, the snowflake is over here. Alright, I'm going to, uh... Oh, great. Okay, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna... I'm gonna ready a uh, spell at that guy there. You said you're closing as much distance as you can? Mm hmm. I got 25 <laughs> feet. <laughs> Which puts you right there. Dwarf. Excellent. Uh, and I say, uh, by decree of true silver, <laughs> I deny you, I expel you. And then I Ooh. hurl a guiding okay. bolt at, okay. oh. at the oily boy. Okay, give me an attack roll. All right. Get it. The oily boily. The oily boily. Oily boily. Oily boily no longer allowed here. That is a uh, a 24 modded out. Beautiful. Mm. Mm. And Guiding Bolt is 4d6 radiant damage. Uh, Some some people have some extra d6. I do. Probably. (laughs) Extra. (laughs) Who's to say? Sure. You got it. You (laughs) You don't need me to figure out which one that is. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Is there any damage modifier to this, or is this just the number? I believe it's just the dice. Gotcha. Nine points of damage. All right. Uh, so, g- give us a little flavor here. What is your what is your guiding bolt look like? Uh, so it looks like a uh, it looks like a a like pure white, not translucent at all, but it's uh, shimmering. Uh, and when it uh, when it flies out, it's almost making like uh, you know when uh, when something breaks the the speed barrier and makes that little sonic boom. Mm-hmm. There's little sonic booms that ripple out from Just over, little, but it's like, yeah, they're like waves. they're like glittering halos that that kind of last that. a little bit as it flies through the air. It goes mm-hmm. and strikes its center mass and you watch like it almost makes like a divot into it for a second and like flecks of oil just spray off it and then it reforms around it um it does it is fully effective it was nine yeah the thing is still up but it's looking i'm gonna say drippier Ooh, drippier (laughs) it's drippier (laughs) uh anything else for your turn no i think uh only thing else is the spell i believe uh Next attack roll made against the target before the end of my next turn has advantage because the mystical dim light glittering on the target sparkle, until then. Sparkle, sparkle. Oh, yeah. So I think advantage is uh, against it. All right. For a second. Uh, it is the hand's turn. And the hand is just going to sort of scuttle, almost like thing. Thing? Yeah. <laughs> Towards the closest person, which is Roz. Oh, no! <laughs> 
Oh no! <laughs> I, you, I assume says that out loud, <laughs> <laughs> and it just like and up on its wrist and throws out to try to grab you. Oh dear! Uh, that is going to be. Uh, that's a natural one, actually. Oh, ooh. So it just whips. Actually, wait. What kind of armor are you wearing? Oh, you know. <laughs> Chain mail. Oh, it has advantage. No. No, it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, don't make DMT. things up. Rejoice, Jim. it rolled a nine. Uh, okay. It just whoosh, grabs at you. You sort of, sort of, uh, and duck away. <laughs> Can you do the thing where you um, highlight, for the audience's sake, um, just highlight where Roz is? Like, Oh, this is Roz right here. Oh, look at Roz. So Hello. beautiful. Also, can we zoom in a little on the battle map? Is that possible? Probably. I, don't know. I genuinely don't know. Probably. <laughs> you know. Tight. We'll see. All right. Oh, oh goody! Amazing! Oh. Look at that! We're learning, We're learning as we go. go. We're, We're very, learning as we go. We're very tech savvy. Hey, that is its turn. With me. Oh, yeah. I'm learning as I go. Uh, <laughs> Ollie, you are up. Uh, I, I, yeah. Um, how far away is the sparkly goo boy? Sparkly goo boy from you, a good... Oh, you put my first and last name on there? It's like a good 50 feet from you. Oh That's fine. <laughs> Uh, I seeing that it is is sparkly and. Do you want me to take your last name off? Don't worry about Do it. Do it right now. Uh, seeing that it is sparkling, um, Ollie is gonna think for a second. Uh, he raises up his right hand, and from his uh, focus, it's almost like a uh, cold mist uh, shoots down his right arm um, to his hand, and then he throws it a uh, ray of frost. Okay, at that, at, this is yeah. at the uh, the the sparkly hand, no, the blobby boy. The oh, boy so I'm boy. sorry. This is the blobby boy. I was quoting you the distance to the the snowflake. This would be silly. Uh, the blobby boy is uh, like forty feet. Okay, <laughs> that's still so is, yeah, still in the range of frost. Uh, give me an attack roll. At advantage, right? Uh, because of guiding bolt. Yes. Well, good for advantage. That is a seventeen plus uh, twenty-two. What does your ray of frost look like? Uh, so yeah, just after it coalesces, like mist, cold mist in my hand, it just like shoots out, uh, and it looks like just blue ice. Just like a jagged chunk yeah. of ice. Yeah. And I'm imagining it leaving like a little visual trail. Yeah. yeah just <laughs> through the air strikes the thing. Um, and that is. A whole two cold damage, and its speed is reduced by ten. Damage is damage is damage. And its speed is reduced by ten. Total. There's just like Sorry, bits of it appear to be fro- there's like chunks frozen solid on the exterior. Uh, I try. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> my turn. Roz, you are up. Okay. Okay. Well, that big old hand just grabbed at me. I didn't care for that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I got um, some battle axes here, mm-hmm. and. Um, I'm gonna swing that. So at just draw. It. Yeah. Oh, how's how relative to Roz? Yeah. How big is this battle axe? Um. <laughs> I mean, probably a good like torso Sweet. size at least. Yeah. Um, and are you going one hand or two hand? Let's go two hand. Sweet. With that bad boy. So just oh raw, swing in. Uh, go ahead, give me an attack roll. Mm-hmm. Learning as we go. <laughs> Oh no! Wait, oh, no. wait! I rolled a one, but I have lucky, and I get to re-roll yes. a one on a two. Yeah. Yeah. I went, huh. No! <laughs> Halfway. <laughs> Just kidding. Better. An eleven plus two means these both of them. You can use both of those. So that fifteen. Yep. Fifteen. Fifteen. Noise. I'm learning basic math. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a 15 for the numbers. hits. Go ahead and roll damage. Yeah, baby. Which means math. it's two d10. Mm-hmm. I only have one d10. Right. It is, is one d10. It should be. Oh, uh, she's two handing it. It says Which two. means a d10. It's, you got a two written there because if you're swinging with two hands, it's a d10. And one hand is a d8. Mm. All right. Oh, because it's versatile? It's versatile. Gotcha. That is the D8 that you're rolling, though. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one. 
They need to make like these some real weird shapes. <laughs> like one that's just like, oh, the one that looks like a little snake. <laughs> a four? Uh, if anyone watching tonight can come up with an effective D10 that looks like a little snake, <laughs> oh, so. please. Uh, I, would, I would actually plus buy Plus what? Your strength. Me too. Plus my strength. A oh, six. Uh, it's six damage? Yeah. Uh, and you do, you're, uh, you're the, uh, uh, um, I'm now blanking on the term. Big weapon fighting, fighting style, right? Great weapon fighter? Did I write that down? Great weapon fighting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So remember that if you get a one or a two on the damage die, you can reroll that. She's just going to keep hacking at (laughs) it. Right, this was a six? Yeah. So yeah, you just, you drag it through, much as before. It like pulls through and there's a noticeable effect, but it's, you're swinging through something. It's there, but it's not fully solid, so it doesn't do the full damage. Uh... But it, it clearly takes the damage, and it, much like the other one, like, there's the, the electricity of it that is making up this hand is starting to look almost a slightly more ragged appearance to it. Like, the hand shape of it is a little less distinct. I want to be clear that she's just screaming the whole time. <laughs> terrified. <laughs> okay. Uh, anything else for your turn? Nah, I'm chilling. Great. Uh, in that case, Jaden, you are up. Okay, I feel like this is far enough. <laughs> oh, so far what is? Oh, and then I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna see what's going on. I'm gonna go. Oh, look, a bunch of ruckus, and I'm going to run uh, in the direction of that. Can I see this tablet yeah. actually? Here you go. That's Thank it's you. Perfect. Um, so you know yeah, I'm going to run. Uh, what's that one? Is that the icy snowflakey guy on the right? Yes. Okay, great. So I know for, for running on diagonals on the grid, I'm going to go with uh, every other diagonal is 10 feet. Got it. Mm, five okay, ten, cool. 5'10", 5'10", 5'10". Fantastic. I'm Someone going to... explain that to me later. 10'4". <laughs> <Ten four. laughs> yes. Uh, I'm going to move diagonal by one, and then I'm going to move over to the left by three squares. So 20, 20 feet total, yeah. yep. Uh, and then I'm going to see her off guard there and go... Um, is this part of it? This is part of it now, yes. I thought so. <laughs> they want to make me look better than I already do. And I'm going <laughs> to pull my uh, whip out. Uh, and then uh, I'm going to, <laughs> let's see, 20 feet. Uh, yeah. And then I'll move uh, 10 feet south. Um, kind of. End of your movement. Yes, and yeah. then like dragging my whip along the ground a couple times. Uh, see the ice thing and do uh, one of these Wait. and whipping it s- around over the head and then a crack. Yes, Ooh. give me an attack roll. <laughs> Absolutely. Let me get this. I'm just gonna put that right there. All right. That is a strong seven. <laughs> That's a lucky number. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, you. It makes a really satisfying crack sound. Yeah. Above the thing. Fantastic. Yeah. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Yes! Back, all of you uh, things! <laughs> Roger. And then I strike yeah! a pose and look around. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Okay. <laughs> That's my turn! Uh, and then the, the, plot the snowflake ahead of you <laughs> yeah. just like turns to face you oh, and just. No. <sighs> and a made the chunk of game. flying ice eerily. Eerily, like the one Ollie threw, comes shooting out of its mouth in your direction. (laughs) Wasn't my fault. Wasn't my fault. It was not me. I know who's to blame. What did I do? But that's a natural one. Wow. This dies in dice jail. Well, keep it. Keep it out. Yeah, I like that one. (laughs) Statistics work. It's not fun if I don't hurt any of you. (laughs) That's a good point. We're so small, though. I know. Uh, That is a turn. So, um,. Bronwyn, you're up. Oh, whoops. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry, I was watching Jamie above. Um, <laughs> no. They can rewind and watch it now. <laughs> <laughs> they went looking. Yeah. Oh, I will make that a clip to play. When we go <laughs> on YouTube, when it has like the most that. played. <laughs> <laughs> that, nothing <laughs> else. <laughs> nothing else. <laughs> Why are people so obsessed with this? You little nasty. I'm going to pull out my... Uh, my uh, short bow, because I'm out of daggers now. Um, <laughs> and I'm gonna go uh, just, can I go slightly closer to, sorry, I'm off screen. But, um, can I go slightly off, uh, closer to. Uh, here. Do you want to look at the tablet? I'm yeah, sure yeah, yeah. 
I'm gonna go, um, you know, diagonal one towards Roz, so I'm within five feet of an ally, yes. Aww. Because mm-hmm. I get a bonus. <laughs> your okay. ally? She's my ally, right? So you, We're fighting against the same you seem, thing. You seem to be, for the moment, fighting against the same things. You'd like take a careful couple steps mm-hmm. over through yeah. the grease patch. Actually, that's too close for a short bow, so I'm just gonna go towards the the um the guy I mean, down below me. Too close for a short bow. Not for the grease patch, for the guy below me. Is no. that the grease patch? The no. green oh, is the oh, grease oh. patch. Wait, is that is the grease patch a thing itself? I'm... It's just grease on the ground. You're not. It's not the enemy. Okay. You yeah, just yeah. made a patch of grease on the ground. Yeah. No. And then can I go down five? Okay. So you're um, going. For, you're going for a melee. Yes. Ah. Eh. My rubbing shoulders, babe. <laughs> your Duolingo streak's about to be broken. Your iPad just told me, and I am so anxious for you right now. <laughs> it's like, can over... we pause the stream so Jen can do her Duolingo? <laughs> it, is, it is over 900 days. Owl. I hope you guys don't mind this for a minute. Uh, well, Jen takes her <laughs> lesson in, what, like Latvian? Ex- how did you know? Can you, can you give us a little taste of what that? Yeah, give us yeah, a lot of Jen. <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna go out on a limb and say let's not do a random caricature of Latvian, just mm. in case. We you do know, have Latvian. a big audience in, in Latvian. Latvian. Yeah. And I do Never know. Know. Never know. What language are you learning? French. Cool. How boring. Oh. Make anyway, an attack. <laughs> yeah, love that for me. Um, I'm gonna go with my short sword <laughs> and I'm gonna roll this one. Where'd it go? That one. Um, ooh, that is. 18 plus 6, 14. Trade yes. <laughs> <laughs> Mercy. Uh, <yeah. laughs> um, 14 hits. Excellent. Yeah. What? I did, yeah, that's. I said 24. No, yeah? What? I, got, I rolled an 18 and then I had a uh, 6. You, I, thought, I think you said 14, I but we'll get Someone there. lined it 20, back. <laughs> somehow 24 Yikes. doesn't hit. <laughs> <laughs> I got a 24. Go ahead and roll and damage. Then, yeah, I'm going to win my D. Right there. I'm gonna do. Oh! Uh-huh. I got full six, so I'm gonna do ten damage. Do you have sneak attack on that? Oh, yes, you and I have, have sneak, sneak attack. attack. That's oh, why I got close to Roz. Yeah. I mean, I got close to Roz because she seemed like nice the, as well. You don't have um, to be next to Roz, the mm, enemy does. Do they? Sneak attack, yeah. I know how this works, yeah. and I'm very skilled. Um, Everybody, and huddle for, in! <laughs> <laughs> and then for my sneak attack, I get an extra d6. Mm-hmm. And Everybody. it's a two, so 12 damage. Ooh. Nice. Damn. Um, good. Again, yeah. you're, you pull out the, the was it rapier? Short sword. Short sword. You know, pull it out and just st- stick it right into the weird hand. Mm-hmm. You're stabbing something that's not fully there, mm. but it does like recoil at the uh, pain. And with that full 12, it just then like de- it unforms. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the hand is now gone. She gets a quiet satisfaction out of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Uh, anything else for you? Mm. See that? <laughs> <laughs> All right. With yeah. the axe in hand. Uh, Blobby boy <laughs> is coming over here, and it's gonna just <laughs> like whip a tendril o blob out at Bronwyn. No. <laughs> what have I ever done? Uh, I just like dive in front of. <laughs> that is gonna be a twenty-one to hit. Oh, that'll hit. Glad I switched dice. No. Goodbye. That's not D6. how it works. Uh, pretty sure it is. It just watch out. It hurts you. It almost stings and makes your skin itch a little. Mm. A little gets in your mouth. Tastes real bad. Mm, oh, I don't like that. Like bitter or like? Yes. Okay. Chemically, <laughs> uh, oh. you take. That's uh, a whole different six thing. poison <laughs> damage. Oh, fuck. Uh, that is its turn. How much more? What? Uh, and Hrothgar, you are up. Ah. So here, uh, what, what are the, uh, any civilians, what's what's the story with them? Anybody in danger, or, or are we pretty front and center? Uh, there are, like, a few people cowering off to the corners. Uh, the things seem to be focusing most of their attention on you, but you do worry about what would happen if you weren't between those people and these creatures. Okay, excellent. I am, let's see here. Uh, God, blah, 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 got electric hand. Uh... Uh, electric hand is gone. Hand. It's Blobby Boy and Snowflake. A Blobby Boy. Oh, Blobby Boy and, uh, and Freezy Guy. Blobby Boy and Freezy Guy, yes. Gotcha. Uh, how far away am I from uh, from from Brown, from Brown Brownwin, right? Yeah. Brownwin, Brownwin. you're about 
You have 15. We haven't met yet. It's okay. Right. I don't mind. No problem. Uh, no, 15. The Alpha just took a lot of damage. Uh, I'm going to uh, I'm I'm going to burn through another spell. I'm going to cast Healing Word. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Yep, I'm just going to uh, murmur under my breath, uh, be warmed by my light. <laughs> what? <laughs> We all heard that too, right? Yeah. It sounded Nothing. like you said murmur under your breasts. I did it really. Yeah. <laughs> Can I I'm I, well, this this is happening. all happening in the... Sorry, you know what? Someone's going to go through the video and check us on all of these. Yeah. Yeah, Every yeah. time we correct yeah. each other. Yeah. You know what? It's because it's I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't do it. Let me just... Please. Go on. Be warmed under my light. Ooh. And it's like a little, like, almost <laughs> like a little, like a, like a nice, like, little... Polony, like very cloudy kind of, mm. kind of stuff. It looks like very that. much like a cloud. Yeah. Ooh, cute. Is that uh, just? Does that just hit? I don't have to roll to hit. You don't right? have to roll. You just roll the the healing. Right on one. D4. That would be wild. Plus, yeah. Yeah. Roll yeah. With <laughs> to get the healing. There's on a them. strong wind. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Uh, that was at Bronwyn. Yes. Yeah. So this this warm mist sort of just from somewhere off to the side of behind, and just like oh. something surrounds you. You do feel this very comforting warmth. And some of the, some of the pain where the thing touched you, sort of recedes a little. And you take. Uh, it's a total of uh, ten points healing. Oh my! Wait, on a healing word? Mm-hmm. It's a uh, score to four. Spellcasting oh. modifier was three. Because you are a life, life player. <laughs> Plus my disciple of yeah. life. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Mm. That's, mm. that's amazing. I didn't even need that much. That's great. <laughs> you feel like real good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna turn around and be like, all the zoomies. My guy, do I know you? I. That was amazing. <laughs> Not yet. But you will. Okay. Uh, I am anything else for your turn? That's a bonus. That is a bonus action, Eric. What's that? That's a bonus action. Oh, what was sorry? The, that, the spell. That, that spell is a bonus yeah. action. Sweet. Then I'm going to cast uh, Sacred Flame. Okay. And nice, I'm going nice, to cast nice. that at. Oh, yeah. uh, I'm going to cast that the Oily Boy. Okay. Oily Boy. 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 Oh yeah, is that oh, deck yeah, save yeah. on you? Sorry. <laughs> yeah, he makes a deck save. Oily Boy. Bloody Loy has rolled an eight. Nice. Not a very dexterous blob. Uh, <laughs> poor guy. It's not super Weird. dexterous. <laughs> okay, so one D eight radiant. You think, mm -hmm. right? Look at suit. That's one, but that's fine. That's okay. <laughs> Still one. Uh <laughs> Yep, one point of damage. My hands hurt. <laughs> Ow. Just what does it look like when the when the flame, when the sacred flame happens? Um, you know, it's it's kind of like the same. Like he's opening his palms, kind of the same way as a uh, guiding bolt. But this one's kind of like flickering on and off a little bit. It's not as uh, mm -hmm. it's not as it's not as radiant as a radiant spell okay. should be. Uh, so when it drops from the sky, it kind of like kind of like catapults in an arc. But as it's falling from the sky, it's kind of falling in that uh. Uh, strobe kind of way, and when it hits, it hits on like one of the darker strobes. Cool, just like flickering as it goes, and poof, mm. little burst that just grazes the thing, and it just goes like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any, is that that's your turn? Yeah. That okay. Uh, the hand is gone, so Ollie, you are up. Um. Okay. So we have Blobby Boy and uh, um 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 Snowflake. Uh. Ha how, is Blobby Boy looking worse off? Uh, Blobby Boy is looking worse off. <laughs> okay. Um, then we're just going to do... As previously stated, Blobby Boy is drippy. Blobby mm. Boy be drippy. Blobby Boy be drippy. Um, and I know some people really take offense to moist, but I don't think I care for drippy. <laughs> <laughs> drippy is my drippy's new moist. Drippy is worse. Yeah. Yeah. I don't drippy like is that. worse. Um, I don't mind a moist cake, but a drippy cake? Oh. I don't want that. It's fair. It's fair. Um, Ollie... Uh, raises his hand up, and it almost looks like he's like thinking about uh, where his hand placement is. He's it, it, there's like a calculation going on in his head, uh, and then he draws. Um, sorry, I need to remember how this spell works. Um, yeah, uh, just three lines in the air uh, that start glowing white, and pew, 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 magic missile two at the snowflake, one at Bobby Boy. Yeah, these white lines just. <laughs> Uh, that should be, uh, so that's three, three, three lines, D um... Three D, so one D4 plus one... Well, for each. For each, So, yeah. that, so that was two, two at Snowflake, one at Blob? Yes. Okay. Uh, Q. let's do, let's do the two at the Snowflake first. Uh, so the first one for the Snowflake is five. Nice. And then the second one for the Snowflake is two. So that's seven, seven total. Snowflake. 
Uh, it, it there's like visible cracks Yay! in its crystal informed. I like that for me. Uh, and then for Bobby Boy, two. Okay. So yeah, just these uh, darts. Well, I like to imagine they kind of when they hit, they sort of just. Yeah, they're both looking pretty rough at this yeah, point. Yeah, they sort uh, of blow up a little bit. Anything else them. for you? Um, Oof. no. Okay. Uh, Roz. I guess I'll just stick to what I know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if it is, if it is, like if huge it is. Whoa! <laughs> Pulls out a spell book, it just says axe. <laughs> <laughs> she opens it, there's a tiny axe inside. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> it. We'll cut out in the pages. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> How you stir your hand down? <laughs> Whoa! Anyway! <laughs> back to swinging! Uh, so I'm gonna swing my battle axe again. Uh, at... Oh my god, it was named Ross. I was like, that would have been weird. Um, at, is that the oil in front of me? Okay. And um, so I'll roll. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you got it. That's a 14 plus. We just went over this. Four? Mm -hmm. So it's 18. That hits. Very nice. Frick yeah. And then I roll a d10, mm -hmm. which is this. No. Oh. Well, it had a 10 up can. top, <laughs> in my defense. That's fair. That's a 6 plus... No, strength. Uh, strength modifier. Yeah. So, 8? Yep. 8! Yay. Uh, not fully effective, however, enough. You just roar downward strike into it, cleave through the middle of it, and it just sort of separates into two distinct blob sections, and then just loses form and splashes down to the ground and just almost instantly just looks like it's evaporating away. Ross just goes, ah! uh, Anything else for your turn? No, she's good. No. <laughs> the panic the, double thumb the, up. The, the, the greasy patch on the ground goes away as well. Oh, uh, uh, Jaden, you're up. Uh, thank you for your assistance, friend, but I've got this one. <laughs> uh, and I'm going to really try and whip it again. Okay. I really hope you do, man. Me too. Uh, I think that'll do it. That's a 21. Okay. All righty. That is eight points of slashing damage. Eight points. Uh, and even halved, that is just enough. You swing that whip out and whoosh, like it goes like right into the middle of the thing and you watch the cracks and it just, and it just oh. shatters entirely. Nice. <laughs> and all of these things are gone. You stand around, taking a breath, and looking around at these strangers who have just helped you uh, deal with the mortal threat of whatever the hell just crawled out of that chasm. Yeah. And we will get to know each other next week. <laughs> hey, hey, guys, remember when I slew that hand? Can we all pretend that I said, that's the sound of one hand clapping? <laughs> oh, that's can we, good. Guys, can we, can everyone we, watching at home, that's canon yeah. now. She definitely did I that. Said, you have to Roz, pretend. remember when I said it? <laughs> uh, so, uh, that is our game for the night. Uh, we will continue from this point next week. Um, anybody... Have anything they yeah. want to say? Yeah. Have our first episode before I. Yeah, this absolutely. Last bit too. Um, for our audience, we have some links up on the main screen that you can see now, but also uh, follow us on Instagram at Legacy of Fools and you'll find our link tree with everything else there. And if you like us, share it with your friends. And if you don't like it, share it with your enemies. Um, and thank you so much for everybody who's all we're already followed um, and shared our posts. It We are like we, very excited. We really do. Agree we were surprised like to have more excited. than five people watching tonight. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And it really helps like a brand new baby project like this get off the ground. Yep. Um, if you want to go even further um, and you are in the financial position to do so, really rolling in it, um, you can also support us on Patreon. Um, at patreon.com slash legacy of fools. That's P A T R E O N dot com slash L E G A C Y O F F F. <laughs> no, O F F O O L S. You can spell legacy of fools. <laughs> it's, it's, it's written, written many times. times. <laughs> it's spelled right up there. It's legacy of fools. Like, 
four I'm, times. I'm <laughs> not sure. I think I did practice that, oh. and it still went wrong. No, um, you I have a problem with numbers. Yeah, Jen yeah, yeah. has a problem with letters. letters. Yeah. 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 Um, the rest of us just have problems. Yeah. 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 It's, um, <laughs> it's, so we start at $5 a month. And Jamie has a problem with furniture. Yeah, it's, oh, <laughs> yes. All of us. Um, it says at $5 a month we'll be releasing some bonus content and all kinds of very foolish things. Um, so if you're interested, uh, go support us. Otherwise, just telling your friends about us would be lovely. Thank you really, so much. really appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, can I say one thing to the audience real quick? Yeah. Thanks for watching! Yeah. Thank you. I don't know if we said that yet. <laughs> Woo. We appreciate you. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, other things. Special thanks to our uh, watch party happening out in Utah. I believe. Yay. Uh, if you are tuning in from Salt Lake City or Cedar City, thank you Hi. so much for joining us. We hope you come back again. Amazing. Yep. Similarly, if you're in North Hollywood or Germantown, Maryland, watch parties <laughs> abound. Yes. Very nice. Oh, that's amazing. That's awesome. Okay, uh, last few uh, special thank yous before we... Uh, wrap up for the night. Uh, very special thank you to Matthew Hernandez and Edgar de Dios for helping us uh, figure out how to make sound equipment work. Yeah, <gasps> they helped don't know. tremendously with the setup of our sound. Yeah. Uh, thank you to uh, Dan Solovich who uh, is making our battle maps through Incarnate Pro. Uh, special thank you to Rob Carlos for character and monster art. It's yeah. gorgeous and spectacular. And, and we will be, be posted in slightly larger form through social media and stuff very soon. Yeah. So you can all see what good art he makes. A uh, uh, big thank you to uh, David Martins Mende for uh, being our chat moderator for the night. Uh, and lastly, a big thank you to uh, Sarah Pohl for what I'm going to call set decoration. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Allowing us putting up with us. Endless yeah. patience. Yeah. <laughs> Just being um, so, uh, last couple notes. Uh, the music I have been playing tonight, um, which I'm 90% sure was not set to the thing I meant to set it to for a chunk of the night. Beautiful. And we'll get better at this as we go. Okay. Uh, so we'll uh, learn but that very nice go. music is basically all currently stuffed by Kevin McLeod because his music's awesome. And on a Creative Commons license. Um, there's going to be a list in a minute on the screen of Maybe. tracks that I... <laughs> They're trying to be... Okay, then it's, gonna, then it's going to go on the YouTube page yes. and on a profile or something yes. so that we have given him the legal attribution. It'll be a list of all of the pieces I have on playlists because we weren't sure exactly which ones would play because I have the one shuffle. Um, and... Um, this is fan content. This is fan content, not official to uh, Wizards of the Coast. There will be a boilerplate legal text. Uh, and uh, I used and token, token stamp. To what? Token borders using yeah, token I used stamp. token stamp to fully format those tokens and make little borders. Um, that's all the stuff I wanted to attribute or thank. So uh, I feel good about that. I'll come up with a smoother way to say all that as yeah. we go forward. Thank you all for watching very much tonight. Tune in next week. We will see you then. Yay!